All right, so welcome back to the Market Eat Food Online podcast. So in this podcast, which by the way, I will go ahead and upload this onto YouTube. So all of our subscribers on YouTube can definitely check out this information and make use of it because I love to help you guys out if it's via podcast or YouTube channel. So remember as well, if you are new to our YouTube channel, this is Market Eat Food Online. I am Damien Roberti. I'm a food entrepreneur and I bring you over nearly a thousand videos now. We've uploaded on YouTube and almost 300 podcasts. So by the way, if you didn't know we had a podcast, definitely check out down below. I'll have links to all of our different outlets. And in this video specifically, we will talk about, do I need a license to sell homemade food in Texas? Texas actually, believe it or not, is one of the best states for cottage food law businesses. And if you're looking to create a cottage food business from home in Texas, man, do you have, you guys have some amazing, amazing benefits over there. And we're going to cover them in this podcast. I'm going to break them down for you step by step, give you a lot of useful information. So listen to this video. So we are all set to go. Let's get dive right into this. So now, if you're looking to create that business from home in Texas, a couple of questions, by the way, really quick, other ones that I'm going to cover because I had a lot of you ask questions about it. And Texas actually seems to be quite a hub for food entrepreneurs, especially from home. So we're going to cover in this license to sell food in Texas. Okay. The other one is the, what kind of a permit to sell food from home? So I'll distinguish between permits and licenses and, and whether or not you actually need to have them. Okay. And then the last question uh, that we got was, uh, what again, what kind of a license do I need to sell food in Texas if I'm doing it from home? Okay. So first off, let's dive into the first most important thing. What can you sell from home right off the bat? Remember, there is under cottage food laws, a limitation to the what type of foods you can sell and where you can actually sell them. Okay. But the most important aspect is figuring out, hey, I have a certain food product, but can I even sell it before I even tell you about everything else? So number one, here's here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through a list. uh, And what I'm going to do also below this video, I'm going to give you guys all kinds of links, fantastic links directly to the state of Texas cottage food law website. Okay. So this, this will have a whole bunch of additional information. If I don't happen to cover it in this podcast, you're going to get a ton of it down below. So I'm going to help you guys out as much as I possibly can. Now, Cottage food law allows you to create pretty much anything except time and temperature sensitive products that could spoil, okay? These are pretty much across the board in every cottage food state. So products that you can make, baked goods, for instance, that don't require any type of refrigeration, you can do cookies, you can do breads, you can do like a pastry, you can do cakes, you can make candy, coated and uncoated nuts, unroasted nut butters, so if you have a, a variation, nut butters, by the way, are hugely popular and extremely profitable. Uh, buying nuts in bulk and basically creaming them up into some type of a, of a nut butter are extremely, extremely profitable business. Uh, Justin's Nut Butter, really quick side note, Justin's Nut Butter, they're called. He started a business about 13, 14 years ago, um, and I think it was four or five years ago. He built that business up and sold it for $200 million. I kid you not. So nut butters is another one. Fruit butters, canned jams and jellies, now you can make as well. Uh, those are hugely popular at farmer's markets, by the way. Fruit pies, vegetables and fruits that are dehydrated. And you can actually include dried beans. So if you wanted to create a variety of different bean mixtures for soups and that type of thing, this is something that you can actually do. But again, of course, it has to be the dried beans. You can't sell the soup, by the way. Uh, popcorn, popcorn snacks, dry mixes, vinegars different types of mustards and cereal, granola, uh, roasted coffee, and even dry tea, by the way. So if you're looking to create a coffee business or tea business online, um, this is a good way to get started at home, of course, and then transition that into an online full business. Uh, Dry herbs and herb mixes. You can even actually, as a matter of fact, something I saw on the list was frozen fruits and vegetables, uh, which is pretty amazing for a home-based food business. Now, the last three I'm about to tell you, you have to maintain, these are products that are considered fermented or pickled, but you have to maintain a pH level below 4.6. So these are going to be specifically canned, acidic, uh, plant-based foods, fermented vegetables, pickled fruits and vegetables. But again, you need to have that pH check to make sure that is below the 4.6 level and that's acceptable. Okay. Now, how much money, Damien, can I sell when I start selling food from home in Texas? So if you're creating that cottage food business in Texas, you can sell up to $50,000 a year. Now, remember, this should be something that you could do as a side business on the weekends. You could produce a product throughout the week and then go to farmer's markets or events and then sell them uh, on the weekends. But additional $50,000 a year sounds like a pretty good amount of money, especially when you're making it from home. Now, 
Here's where we're going to dive into that specific question. As I opened up earlier, I said, do I need a license to sell homemade food in Texas? Um, is there a permit to sell food from home in Texas? Guess what, guys? No, absolutely not. That's one reason why Texas is an amazing place. And let me go through this really quick. The health department and local government agencies that are in your county or city that you're in, they actually don't regulate the production of these items. No inspections from the health department or any local entity, any government entity at all. There is no license, registration, or even permits required by state law. Okay. Now, there is, of course, a need for a food handler certification. And the course you can take, by the way, for that, I'll have a description down below. You can sign up for that and take that online, as a matter of fact, which is really convenient. You do have to have that. But guys, this is something that's fantastic because you can start a business from home without all of these additional required registrations or uh, permitting or any of that sort. So the answer to those questions is no. But let me break this down for you really quick. When you deal with food, you need to be super ultra careful. If someone gets sick or gets ill, you are responsible. So that brings me to this next step. It's not required, but I highly recommend it. You need to create some LLC. And if you're not sure how to do that, I even have one directly for the state of Texas, by the way. I'll have it down below. There's a company called inkfile.com where you can literally take 10 to 15 minutes. You go onto this website. Um, you get your business license or, or I'm sorry, business, you could create your LLC, your limited liability corporation with zero fees from them, only the state of Texas fees. So they actually have some special discount going on right now um, that you can actually do that. So zero cost for you to do this online with them, but you are going to get, and that's their basic package. They have three different types of packages you can get, but you, you're only gonna be charged for the state of Texas filing fee, and I think it's like about 200 bucks, okay? Create the LLC, then get food business insurance. Well, Damien, does the state of Texas cottage food law, do they, do they require insurance? No, it's not, but again, your homeowner's policy, even though you're making this at home, will probably not cover the production of food or running a business. You need to have some type of food business insurance, so definitely have that as well. I'm telling you guys this just from my own experience. You don't want to take a risk when you're dealing with food businesses, okay? Now, the only inspection that you will get at your house would be from the health department, the local health department agency, only if there are complaints or there are people in the area that are saying, hey, a couple of people got sick and had to go to the hospital because of the food that's being produced from home from this guy over here. You could potentially get that happening, but that's not something that's a normal uh, inspection that's always there. Now, you could sell your food directly to a customer anywhere in Texas. Now, you got to keep in mind that if you go to different counties or cities, they may have different ordinances, local local uh, ordinances or laws or regulations there. But the idea to sell it from your home is absolutely allowed in anywhere in the state of Texas. Okay. Now, you must also package the product at your home kitchen. You can't package it at the farmer's market. You can't package it at the event. You can't do any of that. Make sure it's completely packaged and also labeled. Okay. Now what I'm going to do down below too on the label requirements, I'll, I'll send a link down below. You can check out the label requirements directly for the state of Texas. But let me go over a few of the must haves that your label needs to have on it. Okay. So when you begin to label your product as you produce them um, in the state of Texas, this are the requirements. Number one, name and physical address of the cottage food production operation. So that is required. Again, when you check out this link, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So either the common name of the product, if it's uh, blueberry muffins, as the example they have here, then you need to put blueberry mu muffins. This could be a handwritten, or you could be getting labels or buy labels or print your own labels, but it has to have the name of the product, okay? You need to also have all of the required allergens and ingredients on the label. So if you've got um, any major allergens, you need to make sure those are present on the label because if, if someone happens to be allergic to, let's say, even milk, believe it or not, and you produce a product there, you need to make sure that, hey, this is made, that it contains milk, it has allergens, or it's in a facility that handles that, okay? So now the other thing is, the lastly, this is one of the most important parts to the label, is the statement of non-inspection. You need to let them know, and it has to say something like, this food is made in a home kitchen, it is not inspected by the Department of State Health Services, okay, or any type of local health department. So that is a requirement as well, all right? So let's hop back over here and let's definitely check out the remaining few things that you need to understand before we get into some of the technical things about the business itself and how to run it. 
I'm really excited for anybody who lives in Texas, believe it or not. Um, uh, just do, doing this podcast gets me excited for you guys because you guys have a lot of opportunities in Texas um, to make a really good business on the side. Um, so the other thing that you can do in Texas is selling your food online. Yes, you can actually sell food online, but there is a catch. You have to personally deliver the food product directly to the customer. So it's pretty much the same type of transaction that you would have to do if you were in person or at an event or fair or farmer's market, whatever that may be, is that you have to interact with the customer. So can you, can you create an online business selling food online in Texas? You most certainly can. But the delivery method, though, is, of course, you to the customer. Okay. Now you cannot do wholesale selling as well, by the way. So you must sell your product directly to an end consumer. So there's no middleman. So a lot of you may be thinking, you know what? I got a great spice. I want to sell it to restaurants and the restaurant's going to use it and sell it to their customers. That is something you can't do. It can't be a middleman. It can't be anybody in between there. Keep that in mind as well. So next up, we were talking about that food handler's card. Yes, before you begin to sell your food, you need to have a basic understanding of how to handle food, prepare it, package it, store it. And that's really what these classes for food handler's cards cover. It's going to be a lot of that information on how to properly handle the food in order for you to sell it. So now, no zoning ordinance or municipality can actually prevent you from having a cottage food operation in your home. Now, there are some things that you need to take into consideration. Now, since the cities and counties can't say, hey, hey, Damien, you can't do that at your house. Yes, you can. But if you have a homeowners association and you begin to create such a busy atmosphere in the residential area, there may be some issues that will come up with the homeowners association. So I would recommend that you at least let them know. Tell them a little bit about what you're doing and let them know what you're doing at your house. And then from there, at least everybody's on the same page. Okay? Always keep in mind that you cannot sell anything that's actually temperature or time sensitive, okay? If an item has to be maintained at a certain temperature, it's not on the list, don't make it, okay? You can't be cooking tacos and tamales and tortilla chips and things like that out of your house and serving it like a restaurant. That is unfortunately not recommended, nor is it allowed, okay? So now, lastly, let's go over just some of the business sides of it. As I mentioned before about the LLCs, those are things that are not necessarily required, But again, these are layers of protection I highly recommend that you check on. Next up, you need to check to see if you're subject to sales tax. Okay, so if you're selling these products, um, your Texas State Comptroller, which I'll have a link for them as well down below to help you guys out, they are also in the position to say, hey, you know what, Damien, if you're selling and hit this certain event, you need to make sure you collect sales tax. So you need to be sure about that and find out for sure. Next up is a business name. You need to register as a DBA. And then that usually costs, I think it's around $20 to $30, somewhere around there. Make sure your business name that you pick is obviously one that's not chosen yet. And you need to make sure you do that DBA. <clears throat> now, I recommend you obviously, of course, talk to a tax, your, your actual tax consultant or your accountant about the benefits of an LLC, like I mentioned before. Believe it or not, running a business from home as an LLC, there are huge tax benefits. Okay. Check with your accountant and find out specifically how you could benefit from that. But creating that is definitely a big must. Now, next up, a business bank account. Highly recommend you make a business bank account. Don't put or don't tie in your personal account or personal use with a business account. Um, I mean, you could, but the bookkeeping is going to be chaotic and crazy. Remember that any income up to $50,000 is going to be taxed as income. So the IRS needs to know about that income. So be aware of that as well. Okay. So that is a quick rundown of a lot of useful information on what you can sell and what you can in the state of Texas. Highly recommend you do a little research, find out a little bit more about it. Check the links down below, okay? Uh, but uh, this, if this was useful, do definitely give us a big thumbs up. If you are already a cottage food operator and you've had experience, let us know because there's a lot of subscribers and even people on our podcast who would love to know more about it as well. So I uh, appreciate you guys listening and we'll definitely check it out on our next video.